Today, we're gonna talk about how you can verify any email list with AI. I'm gonna break down my method of how I put together a simple little script that allows me to verify any kind of email list for basically free. So first, I'm gonna break down how verifying emails work and the three methods that we're gonna be using to make sure that we have correct emails, then showing you how to get your email inbox set up to verify the emails, and then building out a simple little script to verify those emails. And I wanna have a quick disclaimer on this video video. This is not going to be a full blown email verification tool. I really just want to show you guys how the email verification process works and how we can build out a simple script with AI. This is in no way meant to replace your current email verification tools, but merely to point you in the direction of how it works and how you can build this kind of script with AI. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So let's first talk about how email verification works. Now there's a lot of different pieces that go into it, but basically I'm going to break this down into three kind of pillars of what you need to know in order to verify emails. The reason why you wanna verify emails is to make sure when you're running any kind of email marketing campaigns, for instance, you're not sending emails to empty or unused folders, which could land your email in a spam filter. So first we're gonna to wanna to check for the domain. And this can be anything like my URL at business.com. We basically wanna make sure that this URL that we have right here matches up with the correct email URL. We wanna make sure there's no missing characters and it's in the correct format. So we're not just sending out mail to random inboxes. That's kind of the first check when it comes to the domain. And you wanna make sure that this domain here is actually a legitimate business website or business account. You don't want this to be like 10 minute mail or some random temporary email server. It has to be a legitimate domain that's actually accepting legitimate emails. And now for the second one, we're gonna use MX records or basically the mail exchange records. So to start, let's just say that this is the website where you made your email inbox for your business account, for instance, right? This could be like name, Cheap, GoDaddy, Google Workspace. They allow you to make email inboxes that then connect to a server. And these servers basically have a giant database of everything that you need in order to capture your emails. They have all kinds of records and information in here about where your emails are being stored. So what we want to do is basically this email is legit and has records for it. So we're basically trying to figure out does this connection exist here? And we can check that through seeing if the email domain has MX records set up. So that means there's a legitimate email account associated with that domain. And then the last part is the SMTP server. And the SMTP server is basically verifying if this database exists. SMTP, if you don't know, stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. And it's basically a way for us to determine whether or not the server that the email is on can actually take the email and then send it to the correct inbox. This is kind of the high level overview of how email verification works. So those three checks there basically allow us to make sure that what we're sending is actually going to be delivered and it's not gonna get bounced or sent to a dead inbox. And we can use a couple simple node packages to build out a really useful script to verify any kind of email domains. So let's hop over to VS Code and start building out this little project. You are gonna need Node.js in order for this to work and get the latest version from the Node.js website. But before we even start coding here, we want to make sure we have a legitimate email inbox set up to actually test the protocol to send emails to the server. How we're checking this SMTP server is we're actually using our own SMTP server or our own email inbox through our custom domain. And we're using those credentials to actually ping the server to see if this connection exists here, which means we need our own SMTP server to be able to send those calls. And we can use our script that we're gonna make to make those calls automatically for us. So I'm over on Namecheap right now, and I just picked up this really simple domain here called HRZM Pro. I got it for like $2. And like most other domain services, what they allow us to do is actually set up email inboxes on top of our domains. And if we come down to the bottom here, you'll see we have an option to add some private mail inboxes. Now I've already gone ahead and purchased these. This video is not sponsored by Namecheap, by the way, but they do have some pretty good packages for email inboxes if you want to follow along with the exact steps that I'm using. Personally, I went with the middle option here to get three inboxes to play around with, but there'll be an option down here once you purchase the domain that will allow you to buy the add-on to get the email inboxes. But right now I only have one of three emails made. So I'm gonna click on manage here and I'm gonna create a new email with my Horizon Pro domain. You can see here it also tells us we need to add in our domain settings here. Once you buy a domain and you set up the email settings, we're gonna wanna put this information into our advanced DNS, right? So if we change this from custom DNS to Namecheap DNS, which I think it's the default for you guys, if we head on over to advanced DNS, 
we get more options here to add in some settings for our email. And I already have these records in here, but you basically wanna transfer this information here into this box here. So for MX record types, we're gonna to wanna to use NS records. And then for priority, we're gonna set our host to 10. And then the value will just be the value right here. And we'll set that to automatic. And we'll make a similar one with an NS record 10 with the MX2 private mail, similar to this one right here. And then we'll also do the last one, which is a text file here, which is this one right here. So this text record at and then our little piece of text right here. Those are all on automatic right now. And we should be all set up to go. Now, if we head back on over to add mailbox here, but we can come down here and we can just create a new email inbox. I'm gonna create a new mailbox name called Mike and I'm gonna make our password. I'm gonna make our password verify email test one. I'm gonna do the same thing for this one and our mailbox storage will just keep on 10 for now and we'll save the changes. So now we have our new email inbox with our new information that we're going to use. That's basically how you set up an email with Namecheap. If you want to log into your email, what we can do is head on over to private mail. If we wanna be able to check our email and make sure our domain is working, we can head on over to private mail, which is how we can log into our newly created email. So I'm gonna type in mike at hrzn.pro Row, and then I'll show you guys my password, which will be verify email test one that we just made. And if we log in, we should be brought to our new email inbox. So this is basically a super dumbed down version of our email inbox that we can start using to send emails and test our own emails. This is where we come back over to VS Code to start building out our verification script. I'm gonna start a new window and we're gonna tell it to make a mini verification script to help us verify our emails. So we're gonna say, can you build me an email verification script in Node.js that checks the domain, checks the MX records, and checks the SMTP server to verify the email and tell me if the email is valid? So this prompt right here will do exactly just that. It's gonna check all the things that we talked about here, the domain, the MX records, and the SMTP records to make sure the email that we're gonna send to is actually legit. It mentions here some limitations on accuracy, rate limiting, false positives. I'm gonna say this. How can I build an email verification service? And let's see what it gives us. I want it to kind of outline some of the things it needs to do in order to get this to work. So, okay, yeah, so it says to define the process, choose the programming language, which we're using Node.js for this instance, set up our development, which we've already done. And now we wanna implement email syntax, domain verification, and implement SMTP verification. We're gonna copy this section here, and we're gonna say, so can you build me a simple Node script to test a single Single given email to see if it's legit using these methods. I'll paste in the two different methods of verification that we got from our response. And then we'll say, can you test it on Mike at Horizon Labs group.com? Oh shoot, I didn't even mention Node.js, but even got that we're using Node.js. So it uses basic SMTP connection with Node Mailer, which is the package we're gonna be using in order to get this script to work. But it even says here that we want it to use an SMTP server to mimic sending an email to the address without actually completing the process. Process. We'll say, can you edit this code to do this to ensure the email is verified? And then rewrite the entire code. Before we head on, let's just see if this script actually works. So I'm gonna copy this over and I'm gonna come back into our little application here. I'm gonna name this verify.js. I'm gonna paste it in here. So I'm gonna copy this command here. I'm gonna come back over to VS Code, paste in our command, and then it will make a package for us and then our node modules with our dependencies node mailer. Perfect, so now we can run our little code here. And to make sure this works, we have to put in our credentials we got from our email. And this will just be a very simple check to see if the email is legit or not. I will delete all these texts for now, but we're going to set up our simple SMTP server. So I'm gonna change the information out and put our host in as smtp.privatemail.com, which is the private mail server that we were using beforehand to access our email. And then we're gonna set the port to 465, secure equals true. The user will be my username and the password will be the password we set for our email originally. And what this will do is it'll go into our email and then send a test ping to the server to make sure our other email down here is actually legit or not. Let's test this out. If we save our new code by hitting control S, we have our node 
package modules already ready to go, we can type in node verify.js. Server is ready to take our messages. Email verification has passed. Sweet. So now we have a very simple check to make sure that our email actually works. But let's say, for instance, we have a different email on a different URL, for instance. So if I had this as Horizon Labs groups.com, I could then type in node verify.js and then test to see no, this email verification failed. That is wrong. It correctly identified that this email is not correct. And if I were to maybe add in some other characters into this, for instance, and give it a test, it also does not find anything with this. And we can even go a completely different direction. If I have this URL here, which I know for a fact doesn't have any emails associated with it, if I tried to test it, you'll see it says domain does not have any MX records. So this is kind of a very simple check to see if we can actually determine whether or not a email has any kind of records or SMT servers ready to accept the emails. Now there's one specific case that I want to mention and it's kind of the big drawback to doing this method and kind of what makes email verification so hard. If I were to use Horizon Labs group, but instead of actually using my name, I'll put a fake name. So I know for a fact there isn't an inbox that has this domain name. If I were to type in our command again, you'll actually see that it actually accepts our email and says this is a legitimate email, even though I know that it's not. And this is because most modern email services actually have a catch all policy where they actually allow any emails to come in from their domain if the domain is set up on an SMTP server. So it's just kind of a little drawback you have to keep in mind. I know some services actually allow you a way to set up a system so that if any emails do come in under different names right here, it gets sent to like a support at their domain com or like a help at their domain.com. So that's just something you have to be kind of cautious of when you're using this method. But some extra steps we can even take to filter these emails even more. Just in case we put some emails that are like spam emails or temporary emails, we can actually add in a list of specific email domains that we want to filter out that we know are spam email accounts. So I'll take this code here. I'll come back into chat GPT. I'll say, can you add a list of 10 URLs that are spam and filter them out? And then also filter any emails that go to support or help. So we're going to add another little filter here to further check whether or not our emails are actually legit or not. So you can see here it adds in a common list of some sample URLs that, that could potentially be temporary or fake or spam emails. We'll have it try to generate a good email list for this. Then it also checks to filter out if it's a support email or a help email. And then it does the verification process as done before. So we'll use this example for now, but you're obviously going to want to go in and if you have any particular temporary domains you want to remove, you'd add them to this list that would filter out the emails from these domains here. And now for the last part of the video that I want to show you is how you can actually get this to go through a list and then delete any rows if the email in the row is not valid. We're going to say, how can you make it check a CSV file called data.csv and then check to find the email in that row. If it can't find an email, delete the row. If it can, do the verification check, passes, keep it in the CSV, produce a filtered CSV with only emails that were found and pass the verification check. So it gives us a new script, which we'll use, but it also says you need to modify the verify email function to return true or false. So say, so can you make a new verify email function with the changes? And then what we'll do is we'll take our new piece of code here. So we have our new function that we will put into a new file here. I'll just put this function here at the very end. And then I'll also add in our new like so, and I'll change this to v2.js return true. Okay, so let's see if we can change this. So we want this to console log instead of it console logging or return false. And we'll do the same thing for this one. If it doesn't have a check, then it will just ignore it. We have our check on our verify email function, which takes in all this and does the check for us. And then if it comes back as true, then it adds it to the CSV file and then writes a new CSV file. Our v2.js, what do we got here? Reduce is not a function. I'm gonna take our code here, put it into chat GPT with the error, paste in the error. Okay, so it wants us to use this instead. And then our new process emails function. Okay, let's change out our function here. Let's give this a shot. 
node v2.js. Oh my god, okay, so a little bit of a mishap on my end. I don't know why, but the new plugin that I made didn't put the at symbols inside of the emails. But let's just say for instance, all of these are bricked emails and these were legit emails. We get, This script will go through and then remove all of the emails like these ones, which are not legit emails. And then it will keep these ones like these emails. So you can see in our filtered data, we now only have the ones with the correct information here, the ones that have legitimate emails. Let's actually try this CSV file as well. So we have the email title here. Uh, I'm going to try and change the settings here to filtered to and then let's run this and see if it works. All right, look at that. Two seconds later, we got a new list here and these should all be emails that are actually legit. If we scroll down here, we'll see we have a total of 506 as compared to 534. So it actually removed like 30 ish emails that weren't legit from this list or lines that didn't have emails. So it's just kind of an example I want to show you guys of this script working in action with an actual legitimate email list. So that's going to do it for this video on email verification. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like. I'll also have a link to where you can get both of these scripts down in the description below. And also, if you want to work with me, make sure to schedule a free 15 minute phone call where we can talk about anything from automations, AI, web development. But anyway, that's all from me. I'll see you guys in the next one.